Okay, so today we begin our um, next topic, which is active filters. And we will go through that. We, we have the introduction today, and then we'll do some more work on it in, in tomorrow's class. Okay. This again is um, almost an application to all of the operational amplifiers that we were discussing because we use them a lot to make the, the types of filters that, that we'll be speaking about. And essentially a filter, if you look at it, a filter is a circuit that is designed to pass a specific band of frequencies while stopping everything outside of the band. And we know we spend some time elsewhere and you, you have done it on, on um, signal analysis where you know that signals, depending on, on the type of signal, has multiple frequencies in it. So if it is that, that whatever it is you're, 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 you are designing is only supposed to handle a certain spectrum, then you have to have a way of letting that alone get through while at the same time being able to block everything else. And this is where a filter comes in. And filters basically occur in, in two um, broad categories. They're the passive filters, which contain only resistors, inductors, and capacitors. And then the active filters that have some electronics in, in them. And what they, they, the electronics is able to do is to compensate for losses brought on by the passive component. So you take the passive filter and you add um, a circuit of some sort. Typically, the circuit is, is something around an operational amplifier because it's so easy to configure circuits using op amps. And once that is done, we are able to, to, to offset um, losses that, that, that may occur. All right. And they are, in terms of categories of filters, there are sort of four main um, types of filters, uh, categories, if you like. Um, the low pass, which pass, and, and we'll get through the, the, the full um, definitions as to, and, and see how, how they, they look. The low pass filter, the high pass, the band pass, or the band stop, notch, or sometimes um, you, you see them called um, band reject. Right, all of them, band stop, notch, is a, is a popular term, and we'll see why shortly, or ban reject, okay? Now, in terms of how we describe a filter, we typically describe the filter in terms of the type, which is um, the, the sort of category inside, the frequency response shape and the range, all right? So the types of filters, among the, 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 the filter types we have, we have the LC or inductor capacitor, filters, um, technically you could put in a resistor inside of here. Um, and those, we use those in a variety of, of ranges. If you look down here in the bottom, you'll see that we have a range going from about one hertz up to about 10, well, 10 to the nine hertz, right, and higher. The LC filters, which are those that, are, that have inductor capacitor elements in them and occasionally some resistive elements, um, can run those, those sort of frequency ranges right up to uh, fairly high frequency ranges uh, uh, um, uh, as the case may be and beyond. The active filters, which are the ones that I just mentioned that have operational amplifiers or transistors in them, have a, a lower range of operation because of the devices that you're dealing with, right? And typically may go up to uh, maybe about a megahertz, one, one megahertz uh, um, or so on. You can get some specialized filters that may go beyond. Then you have the crystal filters. And if you remember, we discussed crystal oscillators before. And uh, what we saw is that the crystal oscillator, um, we mentioned that, that the crystal oscillator has a very sharp um, frequency characteristic where the impedance drops at a, at a particular point, and that's where it oscillates. So in fact, you can consider a crystal oscillator type of, of filter where you put in the, the, the um, a voltage in, but the oscillator, the, the, the crystal itself vibrates at one particular frequency. In other words, it only produces that frequency and nothing else, right? So in a way, it's, it's behaving like a, like a filter of some sort. And then we have the mechanical filters. And mechanical filters, you, you're going to see all over the place in engineering. You drive to work or drive to school. And then every time you sit down in a car, that's one type, the suspension system in a car, which comprises the, the, the springs, 
the, the, the shock absorbers and the tires comprise um, a mechanical filter that is supposed to absorb the vibration of the road and, 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 and the like. But you see it in, in, in heavy equipment, in industry, in, in, in machinery and so on, where they mount the equipment on, on, on thick um, rubber mats or, or, or material mats that, that would absorb vibration so that the vibrations don't go through the, the, the factory floor or transmit to, to other support um, uh, mechanisms and so on that you have. All right, so, so you'll meet all, all, all of these types um, for, uh, as you're going through. And in fact, if you're doing energy systems, you, you have come across something called power factor already. And the power factor is what creates the whole concept of kilowatts um, or, or volt amperes and, 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 and reactive volt amperes in power systems. And in many cases, if the, the, the reactive volt amperes is too much, what you're doing is wasting energy in a non-productive way. It's typically being dissipated in heat. And in fact, you, you get charged if you're an industrial um, um, concerned and your power factor is too low. The, the power company like Tech, for instance, will charge you um, a lot or may even disconnect you if your power factor is too low because it means a lot too, too much of the energy that they're supplying to you is just being wasted. And you can correct power factor by using um, huge capacitors and inductors, right? The, the, the capacitors and, and inductors look like large tanks, similar to the sort of things that you see on, on the utility poles. And they are filled, liquid filled um, for cooling and so on, but very large devices and work the same way. It is a filter that you're dealing with, all right? So in terms of how we describe um, the filter, the filter has some parameters in there. First off, any filter has a, a, a range of frequencies that it, it, it will let through, which is what we call the passband. And then it has a range of frequencies that it will stop, which is what we call, of course, the stop band. There is a, a zone where it switches from what it passes to what it stops. And this is the transition band. And ideally, we want to get this as narrow as possible. So you want it to go from passing to stopping as quickly as possible. And then what it does pass, there is a, a specification called a ripple. In other words, that it passes, but even within the pass band, the amplitude of the signal may fluctuate a little bit. So some types of filters, we will, um, you will encounter that ripple in it. We're not going to meet them here, but you will meet them later on, right? Especially if you do the network synthesis course with Dr. Rock in year three, you're going to meet that when, when, when they speak about particular types of devices. Similar for the stop band, the stop band also has, in some cases, a stop band ripple. Okay, so all of these parameters occur and, and describe the, the type of device that you want um, to play with. Ideally, the filter is supposed to pass, whatever it passes in the pass band is supposed to pass without any amplitude or phase distortion, right? So it's supposed if whatever the signal amplitude is coming in, the, the pass band amplitude of the filter is supposed to be, or the gain is supposed to be one. And it's supposed to be uniform across the pass band. It's not supposed to to, to, to reject some or, or, or attenuate some more than others. And then the phase is also supposed to be, um, it's supposed to, to, to not have any phase distortion, which means that there's no time delay. The signals pass through the, 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 the filter itself. Various frequencies do not get, get delayed differently to others. Everybody goes through and all you're seeing basically is a pipe that is letting some um, pass and stopping everything else, all right? And then the way we actually this, um, create it is through creating a type of a transfer function. These are just names for the transfer function. Just to know, you don't have to worry about what it is here. In ECNG 3024, you'll, you'll come across these a little bit more. But these are just names of particular types of transfer functions that, that create um, these filters that we talk about. And some work better than others. Some are more ad ad advantageous depending on the, the, the situation that you have to deal with, okay? 
the filters are designed so going along along the, that same path the filters are these described by a transfer function and we uh, as we already discovered elsewhere the transfer function is basically a ratio of two polynomials and the roots of the polynomials the zeros which are the roots of the numerator and the poles which are the roots of the denominator determine the frequency response and we will spend some time in the other course those of you who are doing it um, talking a, a fair amount about that when we speak about um, our, our upcoming topic, which is on board plots. So let's look at the particular types of filters now and, and see the characteristics and then look at, a, look at some, some circle, circuits that actually implement that type of behavior. So here the first and the most general form, almost every time when you talk to someone about a filter, they, 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 they instinct that they, they would expect is something called a low pass filter. So what the low pass filter does, ideally, is supposed to behave like this red line. It's supposed to pass everything from DC up to some particular frequency that we call a cutoff frequency. Pass it nice and flat, a gain of one. And then as soon as you reach the cutoff frequency, stop and reject everything else. Everything above, uh, above, above the cutoff voltage is, is um, totally rejected. As you can see, the actual response, which is the blue line, tries to follow it, but it doesn't, right? And, and the, the, the better we implement the filter, the closer we can get to that ideal line, but we can never achieve the, the, the ideal purpose. Okay, so there's always some compromise. And as we mentioned before, in, when, when we're doing the design, if you know what you're doing, you can, you can address that, that deficiency elsewhere. All right, but you never quite get to the red response. You will get something like the blue response depending on, on, on how the filter works. The cutoff frequency is also called the, the three decibel, and we'll talk in a minute what that means, the three decibel frequency, the corner frequency, or, or when we talk about boat plots, you'll come across something called a break frequency as well, which is where it literally breaks. So it's going flat here, and then it breaks. Okay, so all three terms, but the, the more conventional term that we'll encounter all the way through our course is the cutoff frequency, all right? High pass frequencies do the opposite. They, everything from DC up to some frequency is totally stopped. And then as soon as you reach the cutoff frequency, it passes everything with the same amplitude all the way through up literally and, and, and until um, infinite frequency. Of course, it doesn't get that high, but it, it attempts to, to, um, to do that. So this is the response again. The red line is, is what we ideally hope for. The blue line is what we really get. And again, the stop band for the high pass frequency is from DC up to the cutoff, and the pass band is everything above that. The band pass, is like a combination of a low pass and a high pass. So you can see that there are two stop bands. So from DC up to some cutoff frequency, it doesn't pass anything. Then it passes a range. And then as soon as they get above that range, it stops everything else again. The red line is what we are aiming for. The blue line is what we actually get. So there are two cutoff frequencies here. There's a frequency a cutoff, a lower cutoff frequency, and a higher cutoff frequency. So when you're redesigning this, we have to specify both of them. That determines the passband. You encounter a lot of these, for instance, in tone control circuits in audio systems. They, 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 they circuits that pass the middle frequencies or the lows or the highs um, are all a selection of bandpass frequencies. And then the opposite, if you like, or, or the dual of the band pass frequencies, they, they band stop, they band reject, or they notch filter. And this one, it passes everything from DC up to some frequency, then it stops everything for a band, and then it starts to pass everything else again. So what you're looking at then is are two ideals. So the two red um, sections are what the, 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 the band stop or the band reject filter is supposed to look like, and it blocks everything in this range here. Okay, we use those, uh, you encounter those, for instance, in public address systems, where, where, when, when they hook up 
those, those things where you have multiple microphones and you start to see, you start to get the feedback and you get in this high pitch whistle. What is done is that, that you, they, 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 the person with the mixing board would switch on a band stop filter and it will automatically put a notch filter right on that squeal and knock off that particular frequency so it, it, it dies down. Again, we have two cutoff frequencies. There's a lower cutoff frequency and a higher. All right. Any questions at this point, always feel free to ask. Um, I can't see the, the chat, but I can hear you if you ask me, all right? Okay, so the first one, the first active, remember we're not dealing with passive filters here, we're dealing with active filters. And the first order low pass filter takes this simple RC network that we have here, and we attach it to our non-inverting uh, amplifier. This is basically a buffer. Now, you know this is low pass and you can sort of reason it out which is what I tell you how to try to, to, to figure out because of your knowledge of, of you know how, how components behave. If I put a signal inside of here at low frequencies, we know that the reactance, the capacitive reactance is high at low frequencies. So at low frequencies, this appears almost as an open circuit. So low frequencies, a low frequency signal comes in. This appears almost like a low frequency or a very high impedance point. So most of the signal goes into the amplifier and gets out. As the signal starts to get higher and higher in frequency, the, the, the reactive or the, the reactance of the capacitor um, starts to drop. So this starts to conduct more and more. So as the signal goes in here, more and more of the signal gets diverted through the capacitor and less goes in to the up arm. So as you could, if you were to drop that then, draw it up, what you would see is at low frequencies, most of the signal is going through. And then at high frequencies, the capacitor starts to bypass or conduct away more, um, more and more of the signal so that the signal going through starts to drop. So you start to get that sort of behavior which is in fact what we call, what we've just identified as a low pass behavior, all right? If I didn't have the uh, um, up arm, this by itself, this simple RC network is in fact a first order passive low pass filter, okay? First order, well, we'll see why in a second, all right? So everybody, understand the, 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 why it's working. Yeah? Uh, so All right? Uh, I didn't hear that. Can you go over it? Okay. You remember from your earlier um, introduction to circuit theory that the capacitive reactants, the one over two pi FC, Right, that, that impedance of a capacitor. When the frequency is low, remember this is a very, the, the capacitor is usually a very small thing in the microfarad range. So when the frequency is low, Xc is large. So in other words, if I have a signal coming in here, it passes through the resistor, but it's seeing a much larger, and I'll just draw it as a resistance here. It's seeing a much larger, resistor at this junction. So most of the signal passes this way. Not much will be diverted through the capacitor. As the frequency goes up, however, this value starts to drop. So the, the, the reactance of the capacitor starts to drop. And once you do that, remember, it's a simple impedance network here. If I have two, impedances here, and I'm taking the output here. Once the, the output here is R over R1 plus R2, right? I'm using R, but remember, it's really, this is, is, is capacitive, yeah? But the, the, the explanation is the same. At low frequencies, this is very high, okay? 
at high frequencies, sorry, the, the output will be here. At low, at low frequencies, this is very high. These two are very high. So essentially everything passes that way. As the frequency starts to get higher, these two start to drop. And if it drops, it means that the voltage across this now starts to get smaller and smaller. So in other words, the, the signal as the frequency goes up, less and less of the voltage is appearing across the input and more and uh, more uh, the signal is being diverted towards ground. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah? And we pass it through because this, and we'll see why in a second, by itself, we will have some losses. So we will pass it through on our amplifier to compensate for that in a while. So what is the transfer function? Well, the transfer function, remember the output, when I put it here, remember, because of the virtual load behavior, this is V out here. So by simple, a simple impedance divider, this is what the, the transfer function V out over V in is uh, a simple R on a C. We already said if I give a transfer function and I want to find out the frequency transfer function of it, S equal, I make the substitution S equal to J omega. So I now get that the frequency transfer function or how this behaves with frequency is now given by this expression here. We have a definition. We spoke about cutoff frequency already. We have a definition that is standard where we say that the cutoff frequency is where the amplitude, so we're passing the signal and the amplitude is going to start dropping. When that amplitude drops to one over root two or 70, about 70%, 70 well, you know, it's about 70.7, 70, 70 ideally if you want, 0.707 .7 again, when it drops to about 70% or one over root two, of the passband value, that is what we call the cutoff frequency here, right? So the cutoff frequency is not where it goes right down almost to zero. The definition, and we have to be standard in this because of all of these things have different shapes. So the, the, the standard definition for the cutoff frequency of, of any filter, whatever you, 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 you uh, are designating a cutoff frequency is that frequency where the passband drops to 0 0.707 .7 or one over root two, or if you like in percentage, about 70% of the passband value. Yeah? So what is that for this particular case? Well, first we have to find out what is the magnitude of AJ omega. And from your complex number theory, it is simple as one over one plus um, omega squared, C squared, R squared. And you can see from this, what makes this one over root two is when this is equal to one or the cutoff frequency is one over RC. So very simple to remember. Typical, the, the, the first order low pass filter, the cutoff frequency is one over whatever is that resistor by whatever is that capacitor in radians per second. Second, if you want it in, in Hertz, it is one over two pi. I'll see. So F in, um, in Hertz. All right, you go back and forth um, and, and, and you could calculate it as such. Why we call it, call it a first order filter, if you go back to the transfer function, notice that the transfer function has one pole. Remember the pole is the root of the denominator here. There's one pole, okay? So therefore it's a first order transfer function. And this is a typical response for a first order filter. If you look, this is the 70% line here, the 0.707 line is somewhere around here. So this particular low pass filter is designed to cut off at about hundred radians per second. Notice the ideal response is supposed to be this. Okay, so the actual first order response is quite away from the ideal response. But you can see the, the behavior, it's doing what, what we want. And this particular one, if I pass whatever signals 
I have through this, it will cut off everybody up to a point, everybody above 100 radians per second, it starts to attenuate. Yeah, everybody following? Yeah, no, maybe. This part we've done before. Right, nice. Okay, so the first order, and then it also has, um, if you later on when we do it, we'll be we, um, in ECNG 2011, we learn something called a board diagram. This is the frequency response plot, and it also has something called a phase response. We'll see why it behaves in this manner in a while, but I want to introduce a couple of things that we meet later on. First, you notice that the magnitude of the response is in something called decibels. And also, that the, the, if you look at the, the frequency response, notice that the, the, the response is not linear, it's in fact a log scale. So we have 10 here, we have, sorry, you have one here, we have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. All right? The first thing is that the, the magnitude, when we express it in, in, in decibels, we are taking the absolute value that we just determined and multiplying it by 20 log to the base 10. Why we did that, and we, we mentioned that already when we were talking about common mode rejection ratio, is that you can express very large numbers or large variations with, with smaller numbers. So we use a decibel um, range for that. And likewise, we use the log scale for frequency because as you can look here in a fairly small diagram, I'm moving from one radian per second to 10,000. If I had to do this on a linear scale, this diagram would have to shrink quite considerably and you wouldn't be able to get that sort of detail on it. All right, so the frequency response, we take in decibels, which is 20 log to the base 10 of whatever the magnitude, um, magnitude a j omega, All right? Take the magnitude because it has to be a, a, a positive number. All right? As I mentioned now, we can put some gain. The RC network may or may not have some losses associated with them. So we can put some gain because we have an op amp and that's the beauty of the active filter. We can put some gain on it as a non-inverting amplifier. So the typical, um, we have the signal coming in here and we put instead a, a feedback on a gain resistor or ground resistor on it. And we're able to get some gain onto the op amp as well. Typically, we try to re re um, restrict the gain to usually no more than about three, right? It has to do with something called stability that we're not analyzing here, but you can get a gain of up to three without affecting the response of the, 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 the circuit behavior too much. And here they, they cut off frequencies, again, both in radians and in hertz. Right, so everybody, that is the low pass response. So let's have a look at what the, the equivalent high pass circuit does now. To get the high pass behavior, we interchange the capacitor and the resistor. And we can intuitively express or, or describe the behavior exactly as we did before. Capacitors have a high impedance to low frequencies. So if I'm sending a signal inside of here, at low frequency, the capacitor blocks it. So nothing very little is getting through. As the frequency goes up, the reactance of the capacitor drops and more and more of the signal starts to get through. So in other words, if you were to look at, at the sort of amplitude at low frequencies, the, 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 the capacitor is not letting much pass, but as the frequency goes up, it starts to let more and more pass and eventually you get that sort of behavior. This is what we call the high pass. So it's passing higher frequencies and rejecting or stopping all the low frequencies in it. The transfer function now, notice again, the transfer function here is V out. So if you were to do the simple um, circuit theory, V out over V in is now SCR over one plus SCR. Notice we have one zero and one pole. So it's still first order, 
but the high pass filter introduces a zero. The, 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 the low pass only has a pole, it has no zeros on it. The frequency response, you take S and you substitute J omega and you get this. And then now we have to find the magnitude of this to find the cutoff frequency. We find the magnitude of that and look at the magnitude when that is equal to one over root two. Same process that we did before. So if you do that, the magnitude is given by this. You could verify that from your, your, your complex number um, algebra. And once you do that, you can see that if omega c is one over rc, which is the same as the low pass filter, that the, you get the cutoff frequency. Again, look at what the response looks like. Remember, ideally, this is what we want. But the blue line is what we're getting, right? Don't worry too much about the phase at this point. We will take that up when, when, we, when we discuss both diagrams in, in, in 2011, right? But just to give you the, the idea that all of these things, there's a magnitude response for it, but there's a, also a phase response associated with it, right? So this one, the first order high pass filter is passing high frequencies, which is anything above the cutoff and stopping or attempting to stop everything below the cutoff frequency. Once again, we can adjust the gain for it, put the, 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 the gain resistor, the feedback and the ground resistor here. It's a, a non-inverting amplifier so that you have a gain here. And again, as I said, we try to restrict it to no more than, than, than three less than or equal to three, okay? All right, so comments and questions. You're following the, 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 the behavior of it, why it is behaving the way it does. Yes? Good, so what we're going to do, this today's class, this was just the introduction to this. Tomorrow's class, we're going to look now, now that we have the, the basic loop, we will, today we looked at what the types of filters were. We know the characteristics of them. We know the shapes, we know the types, all right, how to describe it. And then we looked at the, the our first order low pass and we looked at our first order high pass. The next step now is to improve this response. We're looking at, if you look at this sort of response here, the ideal is the, red, the, 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 the actual is what we have in blue. So what we're going to do now is to add some more components, some more resistors and capacitors and see what happens to this blue line. In other words, we're going to increase the order of the filter. So tomorrow, we're going to look at second order filters by adding as you can imagine, if it's a second order, it means that the transfer function has an extra S in it. So we're going to add another S somewhere. Another S means another capacitor in it and see what the response looks like. We're going to do that both for the first order and for the second order filter and play around a little bit with, 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 with those transfer functions and see the behavior, all right? So if everyone is all right with that, that is what we are, our um, topic for today. Any questions? Right, so I will stop the recording now.